The other day, somebody was asking me whether or not I was doing a stakeout, and the answer to that is no. <laughs> the lighting, I know the light conditions are dim, and it may give you the appearance, but I'm not doing a stakeout. I'm actually just driving to work, just a regular person going to work. That's it. This is really the only time I have to make a lot of these videos. So the topic of today is what can we learn as private security professionals from the U.S. Capitol breach? And here's a story to that. So the U.S. Capitol was breached by an angry mob who were holding up Trump flags. Uh, they're holding up or they're wearing MAGA, Make America Great, again, the red hats, and they breached the Capitol. I don't believe this is something that's American. I think this is an angry mob of people. And I don't believe that they represent the conservative party of the United States. But that's another topic of today. Now, what is going on with law enforcement has a drastic effect on private security. And I'm gonna explain in a minute. During the last two years, there's been a war against law enforcement. And it's an ugly war. Politicians tend to use law enforcement and the military as scapegoats, they also use them as a pawn, as if they are playing a game of chess. And that's not what law enforcement is designed for. You don't use them for that, or even the military. The term of credibility is a long lost term that has been lost in the abyss of social media, social media nonsense. There is a handful of YouTubers out there and other social media hosts who claim to have a particular knowledge set, who really have no business discussing the things that they're discussing. And the problem is their audience puts a lot of weight to what they have to say. Politicians are the worst offenders. Sometimes they impute their own knowledge base and believe what they think is really true and they pass legislation, they pass policies on a subject where they should have consulted with a real subject matter expert. Before the Capitol breach, there was a significant amount of demonstrations, there was riots, and the police had to use their riot equipment. I'm talking about riot batons, distractionary devices, I'm talking about maybe flashbangs, tear gas, pepper spray, rubber bullets. They needed all the, the facial protection. You got the face shields, the, the, the actual shield, helmet, throat guard, chest guard, shin guard, groin protector, your ankle protector, foot protector. This is all necessary. They were holding riot lines, just in case. Significant amount of demonstrators, writers, whatever you want to call them, were injured as a result, and that brought a lot of attention to politicians, legislators, namely Democrats. In this channel, it seems like I'm bashing on Democrats a lot or more often than Republicans, but this channel is about exposing those who give a disadvantage, an, an economic disadvantage, a business disadvantage to those who are trying to work as private security guards, they're trying to operate a private security company, maybe start one up. Same thing with investigations business and maybe also training, um, try to open a training business. There's a significant amount of Democrats that I expose. It's not just and it's not just Democrats, it's Republicans as well, but mostly Democrats. You don't like what I gotta say on this channel? Then unsubscribe. As always, I really do not care whether you stay on the channel or not. I don't have a lot of subscribers, but the ones that I have are, are loyal. Um, they provide a lot of good things to this channel. Okay, they provide great comments, by the way. If there's a Republican, that creates a disadvantage to the private security, private investigation industry, or firearms industry, then I will discuss the issues on this channel as well. So if you know of a Republican that's doing harm to our industry, you let me know. 
in the comments. So as a result of those demonstrations, that was before the Capitol breach, there was a call to, I don't even know this is a word, de-riot the police, <laughs> de-riot. They, the, they don't want the police in, in all their gear, okay, because again, it, it looks too militaristic, it looks too, too much aggressive, so to speak, okay? And that brings us to the Capitol breach. You have a bunch of ill-prepared law enforcement officers that are trying to hold this line, okay? They don't have the necessary equipment because their leaders told them that they don't need it. Told them not to bring it. You have people walking in with fire extinguishers, metal poles, probably some firearms, and maybe rocks, and they're ang they're ang they're an angry mob, okay? That was that was approaching them. What do you think? Common sense is going to happen. The police cannot use these items that are used for riots, stored away, probably in a locker somewhere or a room, on standby. Okay, they don't have the equipment on them. They're told not to. But what do you think is going to happen when you have a, an angry mob coming towards them? They can't use these less lethal options, and that's what we need is less lethal options when you have an angry mob coming towards coming towards you. So what are you left with, really? Okay, yes, you can use your baton, but is that going to be effective against hordes of an angry mob? I don't believe so. They start moving into the Capitol, and you have Secret Service, it looks like, Capitol Police, and maybe some other agencies. They're, they're being cornered in the room, as a result, they use lethal force. Okay, there's a, it looks like a plainclothes law enforcement officer, maybe this person's private security, I don't know, maybe Secret Service, that finds a need, finds a necessary cost to use lethal force and kills an Air Force veteran, okay, who is trying to break into the chambers. It, this is a sad event. And who did not prepare this agency for this? Well, you have the leadership. The leadership of the Capitol Police is a puppet of the Democratic Party, okay? What they're gonna end up doing is this. The Democrats are going to blame probably the DC Police. They might end up blaming the Capitol Police. In all honesty, do you think that the Democratic Party is going to push the criticism of this special agent or undercover officer that used lethal force against the Air Force veteran? Do you think that's going to happen? It's not. And here's why. It goes back to politics. When you criticize, if you criticize Secret Service, Capitol Police, the law enforcement officers in that building that were protecting the legislators from the, this angry mob, if you, you criticize them, you get a hold of the, of the U.S. Attorney's Office or District Attorney's Office, whoever prosecutes federal crimes in that area, it's probably U.S. Attorney's Office, you get a hold of them and you pressure them to file charges against this law enforcement officer that used lethal force, you are going to de... What's the word I'm looking for? Demoralize the federal law enforcement officers that are protecting you okay they're not going to protect you. they're not going to protect you knowing that in another case if they have to resort to lethal force they're not going to be backed up so i don't see the democrats pushing that issue um, i also don't see trump supporters conservatives republicans also saying that that agent did a did a horrible job Okay. As for me, whether it was justified or not, I'm not passing judgment. I'm just saying that this person was left with less lethal options. And I think at that point in time, other than evacuating the whole capital, I think that this agent's 
options were very limited. Um, as for you know, lethal force, I, I'm gonna side with him that it, 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 had to, it had to be done. What, what else are you gonna do other than leave the capital? Okay. You leave the capital, you have to make sure that every congressman, every senator, every, everybody is gone and then you leave. Okay. Uh, if they're still there, then you, 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 you can't, you're not supposed to leave. Directing your duties. Okay. The officer that died on scene, Brian Sick Nick, he was murdered. Okay. Fire extinguisher hit him in the head. Most likely Trump supporter. Don't know. Maybe, maybe Antifa. We don't know right now. Okay. So he, he was murdered. And he's going to be used as a martyr by the Democratic Party. They're going to end up saying, hey, look, conservatives, your own people did this to you. Okay. What you have here are pawns. You have scapegoats. Unfortunately, this officer lost his life. I'm almost sure before he was murdered that he was probably thinking, you know what? My leadership failed me. My chief failed me. My leaders failed me. I can't resort to lethal force because if I can I'm gonna be prosecuted and maybe hesitation set in okay I mean this is this is just sad what does this have to do with private security I'll get to that don't worry I didn't forget about that there's a common practice in the federal government to start replacing a lot of these law enforcement positions with private security positions some of these positions actually pay more than the, the law enforcement government positions. I can easily see private security being a replacement to a lot of these law enforcement posts because I'm telling you, law enforcement, this year and years to come, they're gonna stand up and say, hey, this is enough. You either back us up or not, you don't back us up, we're not gonna stand here, we're not gonna stand on the ground. And I'm sure that those law enforcement officers, many of them, they stood their ground Yes, because of duty, but also they don't want to leave their partners behind me. I mean, leaving leaving capital is maybe something I would I would think about. Um, I would I would consider, but leaving my partners behind is something that I'm not going to do. Uh, you know, whatever the cause is, you you know you don't leave you don't leave leave no man behind, leave no woman, look, leave no man behind. That's just something that I don't do. And I'll have to stand there till the last officer leaves. So, with private security, you're able to maintain more control over them. Legislators, government, you have you have you have more control of them. Pull them by your puppet strings, and that's what I see. When something happens, when something goes wrong, okay, you can't blame yourself. You blame the contractor, you blame the private security guard, the private security company. And it's so much easier to do when something goes wrong. They expect the private security industry to protect them to the fullest, obviously without backing them up. And the private security industry is not as strong as the law enforcement community. The law enforcement community is well tied, well connected to the people out there Private security is totally different. I mean, you have ASIS, one of the leading organizations representing them. California, we have Cal, Cal Saga, um, representing, mo in most part, I believe, the larger organizations, larger security companies. But as for the individual security officer, you don't have that same level of protection, that same level of community. So what I'm going to say is you're on your own. And that's what we're looking at right now, okay? So you gotta consider whether you're gonna leave your post or not. And that's an unfortunate option. How do you prevent this from happening? Well, you guys out there, we're about 140, 160,000 private security officers in the state of California. Elsewhere, you know, including all the states put together, I think we're at 1.8 million. Uh, you guys need to start backing up law enforcement officers and stop stop giving in to these politicians if there's a, a law that's being set in place 
Ask yourself, does it benefit our industry or not? Okay, if not, you, you should be actively opposing it. The laws that are against law enforcement are on the way to be against private security. Okay, look at my other videos. You guys, I make other videos on these topics and there's been, I think, two or three occasions where there has been brand new legislation that was that was introduced or passed or, or discussed. Hope this video helps. Like, subscribe, comment. Just want to know what you guys take.